Nino Brown Boxing, I'm back in the building. Shout out to the LDBC. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. So, I want to talk about Terrence Bud Crawford today. And my whole thing with the whole Terrence Crawford thing is people are talking about Crawford being ranked by the WBA. Now, we all know the whole story when it comes to Crawford being um, Jeff Horn's mandatory. We've heard the backstory about how Jeff Horn is pretty much putting his foot down with Bob Arum and telling Arum that if you don't give me the money that I want to fight Terrence Crawford, I'll take my talent somewhere else and I'll fight another fight in Australia and pretty much eliminate any possible opportunity for Bob Arum to get a big payday off of Jeff Horn. Now, however it works, in the, um, I guess in the background with all the legal troubles, if Jeff Horn was to breach contract, I don't know. That's top ranks business. And personally, I really don't care. Either way it goes, it's going to be Terrence Crawford facing Jeff Horn in a fight that I feel like it will be a good test for Terrence Crawford because he's definitely finding a bigger fighter, someone that I believe is a super wealth weight than Jeff Horn. I still feel like Terrence Crawford has the ability to beat Jeff Horn. So, even though it's an assumption, I feel like it's a safe assumption that Terrence Crawford will capture that WBA title. Now, my thing is, the W, I mean the WBO title, I'm sorry. Now, my thing is the WBA has Terrence Crawford ranked number four. Now, you have Lucas Matisse, that's number three, Danny Garcia, number two, and I don't know how to pronounce this guy named Tiwa Karam. Hey, if someone want to break down the pronunciation of that name in the comment section, definitely appreciate it. But let's keep it pushing. Now, I believe that, uh, so if Terrence Crawford is ranked him a four by the WBA, it's very interesting to me. Now, the chances of Keith Thurman deciding to fight Terrence Crawford 2000, um, 2000, 18, it's, it's extremely slim. But now that I'm thinking about it, when um when has Keith Thurman fought a mandatory for the WBA? I know Danny Garcia wasn't a mandatory because Danny Garcia was definitely a unification bout. And then prior to that, it was Sean Porter. Now, I could definitely be wrong. But I'm willing to take the chance and say that Sean Porter was not a WBA mandatory for Keith Thurman. I think it was a fight everyone was calling for, but I don't think Sean Porter was a WBA mandatory whatsoever. Because looking at these rankings right now, I don't even see Sean Porter ranked in the top 15 by the WBA. So, I don't know, man. I don't think I don't think that was the case. But... Now, the WBA can definitely order Thurman to fight a mandatory. It seems like that's an option that most people aren't even considering. But, well, you know what? That's, it's funny because I didn't think of the, situ the situation like this. So, what if the WBA was to order Keith Thurman to fight a mandatory? And they made the mandatory Terrence Crawford. What if Terrence Crawford and Keith Thurman had to get it on 2018? Now, there's been a lot of rumors circulating around the whole WBC rankings saying that Danny Garcia and Sean Porter may potentially fight each other to get that spot to fight Keith Thurman. So it's like Sean Porter is the number one ranked guy for the WBC. Danny Garcia and Brandon Rios are pretty much fighting each other to get like a mandatory spot. And to me, the thing that I said in previous videos, it makes more sense more sense to have Porter and Garcia face off to get that shot at Thurman. So if that Thurman, if that Porter Garcia fight was to take place mid to late 2018, Keith Thurman may have the opportunity to completely bypass um, the Sean Porter or Danny Garcia fight this year in its entirety. Now, with that being said, it's like 
it leaves Keith Thurman available after this fight with Jesse Vargas. Assuming he beats Jesse Vargas and most people are, believe that he will. They may, they don't feel like it's an actual tune-up. I don't feel like it's an actual tune-up either, but I think he'll defeat Jesse Vargas. Now, if Keith Thurman is available later on and the WBA makes Terrence Crawford his mandatory, that fight could potentially happen. Because, I mean, I've seen the WBA do some shady things, some extremely shady things. They just stripped Gamma Rigondeaux for losing the fight at 130 pounds. They stripped him of his 122-pound belt. So I don't put anything past the WBA. Now, if they get tired of it, I mean, they, they can't be making any money. They really they can't be making any money because Thurman doesn't fight that often. So trying to get the, the um trying to get that belt into Terrence Crawford's hands, someone that held their WBA title at junior welterweight, I mean, it would be actually, actually would be a genius move. Now, how does this whole thing work with Terrence Crawford since he's pretty much the mandatory for that WBO title? Uh, for, to my understanding, how the things with, in the sanctioning body works is you can't be a champion for one sanctioning body and then be the mandatory in another sanctioning body. But the smarter move for Terrence Crawford, and this is just this is strictly for Crawford's benefit, it would be better for Crawford to pursue the WBA title against Keith Thurman first. Because we're all aware of the relationship that Bob Arum has with the WBO. And it would definitely be great for boxing. It would be great for Terrence Crawford. And it would be great for Bob Arum if Crawford was able to fight Keith Thurman for his WBA title. Now, let's just say, hypothetically, Crawford was to defeat Thurman. Or Thurman decides that he wanted to vacate the belt because he wasn't um, he take a page out of uh, take a page out of the Canelo book. He didn't want to be held to these artificial deadlines. Shit, that Canelo was saying, whatever. But um, now it will be in a position where Thurman could either fight, coming off the injury, fight a tough fight in Crawford, or he can vacate his belt and say, you know, I'm focused on the WBC right now, and blah blah blah. And if Crawford was to pick up that WBA strap he would definitely be able to pick up the WBO title as well. Now, that would be a great thing for Terrence Crawford to be unified at 140 and only have fought one fight. You know, I'm rooting for Terrence Crawford. I mean, I'm rooting for Earl Spence. And if Keith Thurman gets back to being a regular old one time, I will be rooting for Keith Thurman again. I just want to see the best fight the best, and I just want people to perform like they are the best. But... If if uh, Terrence Crawford was to go the route that seems to be mapped out for him currently and face Jeff Horn, defeat him, take that WBO title from him, he, won't be, uh, he wouldn't be able to be a mandatory for Keith Thurman anymore. At that point in time, it, will, it, would only be, it would only be a unification fight. And in that position, in that particular situation, Thurman would have every option to decline. And do I feel like Thurman would decline that fight? Absolutely. Why? Because he's declining to unify with Earl Spence at this moment in time. And the only thing that's going to happen with Terrence Crawford, he's going to get, if he doesn't lose, he's going to get better, he's going to get better at welterweight. He's going to improve. He's going to get acclimated to the, to the division. He's going to gain a little bit more muscle mass, and he's going to get stronger. You think whatever performance he's going to put on against his debut fight at 147 pounds, that's just going to be a about 80% of the Terrence Crawford that we're going to get at welterweight. So I think the best route for Terrence Crawford to go is to try to get a fight for that WBA strap, try to get Bob Arum or whoever he can to put pressure on the WBA to allow Crawford to be in that position. Because if he gets that WBA strap, any possible pushing from a sanctioning body pretty much goes out of the window because of the rules that they have in place. They're not going to make the WBO champion Keith Thurman's mandatory. So we just have to see what happens with that. Um, so I guess in this situation, it could be Keith Thurman versus Terrence Crawford or Terrence, or um, Jeff Horn versus Terrence Crawford. He's ranked by both. 
they don't have him currently in the IBF rankings. I don't see him. I don't see Crawford ranked by the WBC at the moment either. So the WBA, the WBO, put it like this. Mark my word. Write this down. January 5th, 2018, Nino Brown Boxing is making a claim. He's making this statement. If Terrence Crawford is to unify, if he's if he unifies, after he gets that WBO strap, the other belt that's going to be on his shoulder, if he was to unify, will be the WBA. I feel like he'll get that fight with Thurman before he get that fight with Spence. I believe that... Um, Bob Aaron will have more confidence with Terrence Crawford going against Keith Thurman, someone coming off an injury, someone that hasn't been very active. He will have more confidence with Terrence Crawford beating Thurman over Terrence Crawford beating Spence. But this is Nino Brown Boxing. Shout out to the LDBC. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Peace.